To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. Welcome to Spirit Life Ministry International. We thank God that we can come together today. And with, this is our time of service with the meal that heals. My topic is for just a moment. Are you willing to make the sacrifice to please the Lord? 1 Corinthians 1.30 talks about we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Righteousness is the quality or state of being morally correct to have a nature of moral correctness. Righteousness is mentioned over 500 times in the Bible. It's not the most popular subject and it can be uncomfortable. Romans 3.22 says we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is, a tr is true for everyone who believes, no matter who you are. Remember, no matter what you've done, no matter who you came from, no matter if you didn't believe, but if you choose to believe now and accept Jesus as Lord, you have a right to be saved. Amen. We are made in the image of God and we want to be right, do right and treat people right and be treated right. Unfortunately, sin throws a moral compass off. Our struggle is to understand and attain righteousness begins in the Garden of Eden. Again, are you willing to sacrifice to please the Lord? Proverbs 16, 7 says, When a man's ways pleases the Lord, he make it even his enemies to be at peace with him. That's something right there. When Even when you can't do nothing, even when they plotting and scheming, that they have to be at peace with you when your ways please the Lord. 
Proverbs 16, 25, there is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And I wanted to give an example about Cain and Abel. Abel was the shepherd and Cain was the farmer. At the harvest time, Cain brought the Lord a gift of his farm produce. And Abel, he brought the fatty cuts of meat from his best lambs and presented it to the Lord. But the Lord didn't accept Cain's offering to him, his gift to him. You know, and Cain was a hard worker, but he accepted Abel's because Abel, he gave his first and his best. But, you know, Cain, he gave out of his abundance. So, you know, then Cain, he got mad when God did that and he got angry at Abel, his brother, who had nothing to do with the fact that God did not accept what he offered. So instead of repenting, instead of getting back in line, he plotted and schemed and he did wrong and he killed his brother. You know, but today, even if you have not been pleasing the Lord in some of your ways, Thank God for his grace and his mercy. Grace is unearned, undeserved, and unmerited. And you have an opportunity right now to, you know, get on the street called straight for yourself. You know, you don't have to be like Cain and his life was hard after he did not do what God wanted him to do. You know, you may not go to hell for what you're doing, but life could be a whole lot better if your ways please the Lord. Glory be to God. So, you know, that's why, you know, when we accept Jesus as Lord, we got, you know, a right to receive, you know, the inheritance that's in the word of God. But the abundant life is something even greater. God want to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask, think, dream, or even imagine. So today we're going to take the meal that heals. You know, take the time to yourself and, you know, say to yourself, you know, what area do I want to get right with God? What is out of line? Because I don't want to miss it. I don't want things in my life being hindered and held up. Not my money, nothing with my children, not with my help. You don't want to give the devil a legal right to come in and wreak havoc in your life. But the grace of God give you another opportunity to get it right. So we're going to take the bread which represents, you know, his broken body. And we're going to do it in remembrance, you know, because we got a right to be healed. You know, he was beaten and bruised for our transgressions. He was, he took it all in his own body. So let's do it in remembrance. The blood represents, look, the forgiveness of our sins in past, present, and future. So you, no matter what you've done, it is a done deal. He's already nailed it to the cross. So let's do it in remembrance. Amen.
Good morning, good morning, good morning, and good morning again. The Lord is so good, and we're so glad to be a part of this end time army. Welcome to Spirit Life Ministries Sunday morning worship, and uh, we want to greet all of our online community as well as our uh, our. Uh, body of believers here at 3401 Governor Prince Boulevard, right here in the heart of Wilmington. And uh, we're just so glad that you've joined in with us today. Now, it's a little chilly today, so we're not outside. As you can see, uh, we took a little uh, break today just to uh, be able to be a little warmer and uh, I think it was like 27 this morning uh, as I was on my way uh, to the service. And so we we thought that was just a little bit too brisk uh, for us today. But all is well, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll see you uh, next week in the parking lot. Amen. Honking horns and uh, praising God together. You know, uh, some people are a little irritated, you know, when you beep the horn and uh you know i i understand that uh that might break up uh a little bit of the uh maybe if you're trying to concentrate but you know our god is worthy of so much praise and you can never overly praise the lord and so uh we try our best to uh make it a balance but sometimes you know uh, you can't please everyone, but we just thank God that you're here with us today. And there's so many churches doing the will of God, so many wonderful ministries. And we're just glad that you uh, have taken your time uh, to be with us this morning. Um, you know, Romans 8 and 2, Romans 8 and 2 talks about the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus making us free from the law of sin and death. And uh, it's just so wonderful to know that you have a work of grace on the inside of you called spirit life. And as we continue to yield to that spirit life and let it instruct us and teach us in the way we should go, it's a wonderful thing to understand that God is working in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, you have to understand this. Because you have spirit life on the inside of you, that means God will never give up on you. So don't you give up on God because he won't give up on you. And there's a law of life in you. And if you're aware of it, if you're cognizant of the life of God in you, uh, second Peter one 19 talks about the more sure word of prophecy. And, uh, it says, 
uh, we have a more sure word of prophecy. And I liken that to the, the spirit life of Almighty God. And it says, you, you, you need to take heed and understand that there's a law of life in you. There's a, a more sure word of prophetic utterance in you. And it says, take heed to it because it, it's like a, a light that shines in a dark place. Meaning a, a lot of people, uh, I'm sure many of you uh, have experienced this. You got, you, you got an evil report. You got some bad news. And you started off in that situation. It was like a light, just a little bit of light in a dark place. But you continue to persevere. You continue to hold fast. You continue to praise and pray and do all you knew to do. And the word of God says it went from a day dawn. It went from a little bit of light in a dark place until the day star came, the noonday sun, the fullness of your blessing manifested because you were willing to continue the process in walking with God. And I said all that to say that the life of the spirit of Christ is on the inside of you. And even if you're in a dark place today, even if you just have a little bit of light, know that the spirit life of almighty God, El Shaddai's life is on the inside of you and you hold fast. Amen. You continue to pray. You continue to praise God. You continue to meditate on the word of God. You continue to say what God says about you and refuse to be subjected to that evil report and watch the law of life make you free from the law of sin and death. Amen. It's working. The spirit life of almighty God is working in the believer. So don't fret because of evildoers. You know, don't be envious against the workers of iniquity. Just continue to trust in the Lord and do good. Psalms 37, you'll dwell in the land. Amen. You'll have your part in society. And verily, the word of God says, you'll be fed. And then go on to the next phase. Delight yourself in the Lord. And watch the desires of your heart come to pass. And I've had God give me some desires that I didn't even know were in me. Amen. I mean, it's when it manifested, I was like, oh, Lord, thank you. But it was not in my conscious thought. So uh, spirit life, abundant life, Zoe life, the God kind of life, the life that Jesus died for is the life we're always striving for. Amen. And if you feel like you're a little bit behind, amen, just continue to trust God. Because that spirit life is in you. And it's working like a two-edged sword against the law of sin and death. Amen. And you're going to live and not die in the spirit life of almighty God. Amen. Well, we've heard from uh, Minister Crystal and our dear brother Mark today. And uh, they went before us and did a wonderful job. And so we're going to pray and get right into the word of God Amen for this morning. Father, we thank you that your word is spirit life. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And I thank you, Lord, that that spirit life begins to attach itself in rhema, in the logos, to all who would be listening this day, and we give you praise and we thank you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through Jesus. One God and one mediator between God and man. 
And that's the God man, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And for this, we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Let's turn over here to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 16, Acts chapter 16. And uh, <clears throat> our outline's pretty extensive today. So sometime today, the outline will be on our website, uh, Spirit Life Ministries International dot org. And uh, you can look on the website and uh, get the notes from today. And we're going to try to be um, consistent <clears throat> and having notes for you from every uh, message that we bring forth. But we're looking at uh, today insight for living, you know, various insights that you need to have when you're embarking <clears throat> in the things of God and you're looking to the Lord, uh, whatever situation you're in. There's certain things that you need to see. Now, Acts chapter 16, um, verses 25 to 31, we understand this is the situation when, when Paul and Silas, uh, they're in Philippi, and um, <clears throat> every day they go by this uh, young girl, and she has a spirit of soothsaying. And every day that they go by, uh, the girl says, these are the men of God that preach the salvation of God. And it's, it's a devil. A demon spirit is saying this uh, through this little girl. And the word of God says one day, Paul just gets so vexed in his spirit. He's so grieved. That this demon spirit is talking through this little girl and her masters are making money off of her soothsaying. It's kind of like she's a, a psychic and uh, uh, the um, these men have her for the express purpose of telling others future. And they're making big money off this girl. And she sees Paul and Silas and she says, these are the men of God that are preaching the salvation of God. That's true. You know, the devils know God. The word of God talks about in the book of James, you know, you say you believe, you know, well, the devils believe also and they tremble, but they have no part in redemption. And the Apostle James is talking about not just believing, but having substance to your walk, having works to your faith. We're not saved by works, but we've been separated unto God for good works. And so um, this little girl uh, is, is, is continuously um, saying how Paul and Silas are men of God and they're, they're preaching the salvation of God. And it says in the book of Acts, uh, Acts 16, Paul turns around on a particular day and tells that demon spirit, you come out. Come out of her in Jesus' name. And the word of God says, before the day was over, the demon spirit had been released from the girl. Now there's a problem because her master's living has been taken away. They used the girl, they used that spirit of divination to make money from the little girl. Now the spirit has been cast out. And the word of God says, Paul and Silas are beaten and thrown into prison. And they are so upset that they put them in the uh, inner part of the prison. I guess that would be uh, synonymous to the whole, solitary. And they put them in the inner part of the prison and they put their feet in the stocks. I mean, it's bad enough that they're, you know, in the hole, but they're chained. And the word of God says, and this is my first insight 
that I want you to see. No matter when it's going good, no matter if it's going bad, our first reaction to any situation should be to pray and praise God. It says in Acts chapter 16, verse 25, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. They weren't on the main floor, but they heard them. There was a supernatural. They turned this darkness, they turned this beating, they turned this unjust act. And instead of saying, you know, Lord, why me? You know, you've called us to cast out devils and to preach the gospel. Why are we now in jail for a just act? It's part of your plan for man to get the devil off of man. And you have anointed us for that. No, they didn't go into that. They're in jail. They're in the hole. And the word of God says they begin to strike up a praise and prayer meeting. And it must have been pretty loud because it says the prisoners heard them. And then it says in verse 26, Suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. The keeper of the prison, awaking out of sleep, seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling, fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, we all know this verse, Acts 16, 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved with your household. And so Paul and Silas have a reaction to a negative, but it's a positive reaction to a negative situation that ends up working for their good. And not only do they get out of jail at night, by a supernatural hand, the Philippian jailer, who's about to get, he goes from suicide to boldly inviting, inviting the apostles into his house, and they start the church at Philippi, Philippi, where we get the book of Philippians, that church is started right in that man's house who was about to kill himself when the earthquake came and he thought all the prisoners had escaped. And so we understand that prayer and praise should always be our first reaction, especially when things uh, are negative and we don't fully understand uh, what the situation, where it has come from, we can't trace it. You know, it just, it just blows up before us. Uh, we understand prayer and praise should always be our first reaction. I'm going to read out of the, um, the Greek expanded translation. This is, uh, Kenneth Weiss, the Weiss word studies. And, um, this is Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7 in the Greek translation. It says, be rejoicing in the Lord always. Again, I say be rejoicing. Let your sweet reasonableness, your forbearance, your being satisfied with less than your due become known to all men. Paul says, keep a praise on your mouth. You know, 
Keep a sweet reasonableness about you. Amen. Doesn't have to go. Let it be known. Okay. Even if it doesn't go your way, there's not going to be vindictive behavior. There's not going to be a tantrum. There's not going to be, you know, uh, just all this drama. Paul says, let your sweet reasonableness, your forbearance, your long suffering disposition, uh, <clears throat> You're being satisfied with less than your due. Well, that's hard, especially for us Westerns, you know, you know, we just feel like we should have, you know, but Paul says, even when you come up short, it's all right. It says, let it be known to all men, the Lord is near and that his coming may occur at any moment. Stop worrying about even one thing, but in everything by prayer, whose essence is that of worship and devotion. True prayer is a attitude of heart. True prayer is not our father, which art in heaven, how to be thy name. No, no. True prayer is an attitude of heart that we carry. Remember in the Old Testament, the Ark of the Covenant that represented the presence of God, and it went with the people of God. Well, now the spirit of God is on the inside of us. The ark is on the inside of us. And as we uh, stay in touch, amen, as we commune, as we fellowship with the God on the inside of us, the fruits of the spirit, the peaceable fruits of righteousness begin to emanate in and through us. And the word of God says, true prayer has its essence in worship and in devotion to God. And it says, and by supplication, which is a cry for your personal needs, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, praise and thanksgiving is always necessary. An attitude of gratitude. Now, I believe many times that's why people can't get their prayers answered. You'll be there. Well, I pray. Now I've had people come to my office. Well, Pastor, I did this. I did. I did this. I did that. I did the other. Okay, okay, okay. But now you've been in touch with the presence. See, you got you got to be in touch with the presence of God, Amen. For your words to be weighty. Without a worship and without a devotion to God, you're really not praying. You're, just, you're talking to yourself. So it says, with thanksgiving, let your requests for the things asked for be made known in the presence of God. Now, we, we could stay here, you know, for the rest of the time, but, we, you know, we're not going to do that. But the word of God says that our lives should evolve in and through and around the presence of God. Amen. Now, this is not emotion. You know, you don't want to gauge your prayer life off of what you feel. Amen. You want to gauge your prayer life off of what the word of God says. And the word of God says, you know, we should commune with the word of God. We should commune with the spirit of God. And you know when the peaceable fruits of righteousness are abounding in your life. And it says that this, this worship, this devotion, this attitude of gratitude is going to assure you that the presence of the Lord is with you. And of course, sometimes we, we sense the presence. We feel the presence. Sometimes we can just emotionally feel that anointing. But then there's times when uh, we don't, but he's still there. I don't believe that Paul and Silas felt the presence of God as they were getting beat, as they were getting uh, whipped, and thrown in the jail. 
but they were cognizant. They were very much aware that God was with them. And then when they got alone, instead of pouting, instead of doubting, they just begin to praise and, and, and pray and thank the Lord for that situation. Not that he did it, but it says in everything, give thanks. Not that the things that are transpired, transpiring, not that God has done that thing. Uh, we, we know the enemy came against him, uh, them for a good work, but they still made up in their mind, they were going to do the word and they were going to pray and praise God. And then the presence of God began to manifest even stronger and an earthquake came. Everyone's bands were loosed. Amen. And glory to God, the church at Philippi was started as Paul and Silas prayed and praised God in the midst of a very wearisome, very dark situation. And again, I just want to reiterate this because, you know, we've got this COVID-19 going on. You know, we've got all kinds of drama going on and we're going to have to make a decision. Are we going to pray and praise God? Let the presence of God bubble up on the inside of us. Are we going to, or are we going to murmur like the world? Are we going to complain like the world? And we, we all come short. We all complain. But I'm, I'm what I'm trying to uh, pinpoint today is that when Paul and Silas, in spite of their circumstance, when they begin to pray and praise God and sing the song of the Lord. You know, the Bible talks about God will compass us about with songs of deliverance. He'll give you a song in the night season. He'll give you a healing song when your body is in pain. He will minister to you. If you let them. Amen. And so the apostle Paul and our dear brother Silas, they are praising God. They are praying. They are in worship <clears throat> and a supernatural phenomenon happens. They get an earthquake in that prison house. Everyone's bands are loose. No one dies. No one gets swallowed up. I believe everyone in the prison knows the presence of God is behind this earthquake. I believe they all know that God is behind this. He's behind his apostles that have been unfair. Vengeance is mine. I'm talking to somebody. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Vengeance is mine. And they were beaten, they were put in jail unfairly, and God brings them out. Let God bring you out. Amen. Just let God bring you out. Let God do it. Everyone's just trying to manipulate this. Let God do it. Let God heal your body. Let God bring your money. It's going to come. It's going to come. You continue to... Uh, Pray and praise and stay before the Lord and grab a promise. Amen. There's a promise for every problem. Take your promise and just begin to med meditate on it. Begin to say it. Bless the Lord for it. Amen. Maybe your money is stopped up today. Maybe the, the unemployment checks are, are not coming in. Or maybe what's do you, you haven't been seeing yet. But the, Thank God for it. Praise God for it. Paul and Silas begin to praise God. Man, they were literally having a service up in there. And uh, unbeknownst, they didn't know an earthquake was coming. They didn't know a, a, a jailhouse break was coming that night. They were not aware of that. They just followed the spirit of the Lord. They responded to the inner voice of the spirit of God. Amen. And 
before the night was over, they were free. And, and guess what? They weren't looking for him either. <laughs> Nobody was looking for the apostles. Amen. They were out. They were free. And I, I bet you the warden said, hey, we don't touch this. That's the MC Hammer. Don't touch this. <laughs> We're not touching them. Jail, an earthquake came because of their prayers, because of their praise. We already know we locked up these holy men of God unjustly. And now God has vindicated them. Can't touch that. We're going to leave that alone. And I'm talking to you today. God knows where you are. God knows where you've been through. And he's going to vindicate you. You do not have to do anything but stay in his presence and worship his holy name. Hallelujah. I'm getting caught up on it. Y'all make me preach. I see you. But it's a good thing. Amen. And then it says, I'm reading out the, the Greek translation here. It says, uh, stop worrying about even one thing, but in everything by prayer, whose essence is that of worship and devotion, and by supplication, which is a cry for your personal needs, with thanksgiving, let your request for the things asked for be made known in the presence of God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all power of comprehension, the peace of God, which surpasses all power of comprehension, shall mount guard over your heart and over your mind in Christ Jesus. Paul says that the peace of God has the ability to surpass your power to comprehend it. Meaning, God said, if you praise me, if you thank me, if you get into prayer with me, get into supplication. Remember, said, supplication is a cry for the personal need. Say, Lord, I'm, I'm coming to you this morning and I'm coming to you about me, <laughs> about us, <laughs> about us for Lord. I'm coming to you in behalf of me and my children. I'm coming to you, Lord, and I, I need you to work this situation out, but I'm going to praise you first. I'm going to pour out my heart before you first. That's what you told me to do. And the word of God says, when we do that, there's a peace that surpasses, goes beyond your ability to comprehend. So today, when you're walking around with a smile on your face and nothing has changed, the situation hasn't changed, the money hasn't changed, the vocation hasn't changed, the ministry hasn't changed, nothing has changed, but your mind is at peace and your heart is clear, you know God is working in your affairs. The peace of God, the word of God is clear about this. It says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. The word rule there in the book of Colossians means umpire, the umpire. Peace will let you know if you're out or if you're safe. Now, you know, you can ignore the peace, but uh, if you're in prayer, if you're in praise, if you're in fellowship, you'll know that the peace of God that passes all understanding has its hand on you and everything's going to be all right. Amen. Everything is going to be all right. The peace of God, which has the ability to surpass all power. I'm being redundant on purpose because you're going to walk in a peace today and you're not even going to know why. I'm telling you why you're fellowshipping with the Lord. You're fellowshipping in his word. You're letting the word dwell in you richly. You're praising God instead of murmuring and complaining. You're praising God and the peace of God is letting you know 
God has your situation. Amen. A new thing is coming. Amen. Isaiah 43. God said, I'm doing a new thing for you. Don't you recognize it? Well, Lord, how can I recognize it? I can't see it. I can't hear. The peace lets you know something's happening. The peace of God is the indicator. God is working on your behalf. That's why he told his people. He said, I'm doing a new thing. Don't you know it? Can't you recognize it? Can't you see it? I'm making a way in your wilderness. I'm bringing a river through your desert right now. So don't wait to shout later. Go on and shout today. Go on and praise God today. Amen. You got a peace on you that you don't understand. That means God is working. The money's on the way. The family's being mended. The situation is being mended on the job. The angels are flying around doing their part for you. You know you got friends in high places. You know you got friends, amen, greater than the ones down the courthouse, amen, greater than what your lawyer knows. You got friends, amen, of the divine nature. You've got friends that God dispatches on your behalf to do your bidding. Hey, you know where God says, where's that? I believe it's over in the book of Hebrews. It says, watch out now, because some of my people have entertained angels unaware. Be careful how you treat people. You could have an angel in your midst. Hallelujah. And it might look like a homeless person. I'll never forget, uh, I was on a long fast years ago, and a um, friend of mine, we were driving through uh but it was market street in philadelphia and it was when it was a cold night it was very cold and uh we had just come out from a, a prayer session and uh man it was cold and uh, as we we're going down market street uh we saw some homeless people they were on a crate i guess some heat was coming up and they had the blankets uh, over their heads, and um, for some reason, the Spirit of God had me just look over there. And uh, I'll tell you, before God, I'll tell you, I look over, and one of the homeless people, I'm thinking one of the homeless people, I know God had this happen to me on purpose. He pulls off the covers, and I look at his face, and it's shining. It's glowing. And I knew, I know a person looked like that. That was an angel of the Lord keeping the homeless people safe. God is, uh, that was an angel. Now, I might not have seen that. Had, had I not been on that fast. See, s s some things don't happen to you until you get lathered up in the spirit. You know, you, 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 you. some things don't happen until you go out there in the spirit and your eyes get open, your spirit gets sensitive, and things things begin to matter. I would have a matter of fact, I just looked over and in my natural mind, I was thinking. Why don't those people go home and get, why don't those folks that try to get inside? And then, but I didn't utter that. I'm, you know, your mind can try to say all kinds of things to you, you know, without you helping it. But I just kept looking, which is a rare thing. And um, the angel took the cover off. And I just saw right on Market Street. Now, someone said, uh, Pastor Gaines, you know, you said you was fasting. Yes, but it could have been a lack of, it wasn't no lack of food. <laughs> I, I see where you're going with that. It was not a lack of food. You know, I can't prove it. You can't disprove it. Let's just leave it that way. I can't prove it. You can't disprove it. I saw an angel on Market Street, and when he pulled that cover back, 
His face was glowing like the glory of God. Angels all over. And when Jesus comes, watch this now, and he's soon to come. All the angels, all the saints, amen, everything that's God-like is going to leave this earth. And then the Antichrist is going to have full reign because there's not going to be a witness of heaven in the earth. And then, of course, we know we'll be caught up to be with the Lord. Amen. And there'll be seven years of tribulation. But I said all that to say, you know, angels, angels. Amen. The word of God says that uh, are not uh, these ministering spirits sent forth to minister for us who are heirs of the promise of salvation. But they don't get the ministering when we fuss and they don't get the ministering when we all in strife. They don't get the, you know, they, they just sit there and wait, is somebody going to praise here? Is somebody going to thank God in this situation? Is somebody going to loose us so that we can clean up this mess. They're ministering spirits waiting to help you turn your mourning into dancing. There are ministering spirits waiting for you to give them the go ahead. But you know how we do. Oh, how's it going? Well, you know, you know, my wife, you know, she's still nagging. My husband, he's still drinking. I call himself, say, uh, you know. I, I mean, we, we, we murmur and complain and we put ourselves in the hole. Come out the hole. The peace of God is waiting. And it says, it goes beyond your power to comprehend. That means if you got a doctorate degree, that means you got two doctorate degrees, three doctorate degrees, and three master's degrees. He said, Pastor, Ken, why are you always make? I'm not, I'm not making fun of people with degrees. You're going to get your education. But the revealed knowledge of God is greater. Don't get so much education, you don't lean on God no more. You know, don't trust you to the point you can't trust God. Because the fool says in his heart that I don't need God. So let's give God the glory today. Let's give him the praise today. If you're on lockdown, give him the praise. If you're on the mountain, give him more praise. This is what the scripture says. If uh, any is merry, if, if, if any be afflicted, James says, let him pray. He says, if, if your heart is light, Everything going your way? Sing a song. <laughs> he says, if any is afflicted, any sick among you, call the elders of the church. Anoint them with oil in the, in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will raise, the, the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. That means if you're a minister today, don't let that pressure be on you. Just anoint them with oil and keep on moving. God's the healer. You're not the healer. But you're doing what God say do. Amen. Give God praise for the fruit of his word that's going to come to pass because you've done what he told you to do. Well, my time is up. We only got on point one. We had eight of them. But uh, we got we got caught up. Amen. It's all right. Amen. It's all right to to flow where God tells you to flow. Amen. As ministers, we we have to understand this is what thus says the Lord. Amen. And and we want to hear what thus says the Lord. We don't want to be so caught up in what we've studied and what we've looked at. That God can't speak. Amen. But I'm comfortable in my spirit today that in this brief time, the spirit of God has exhorted us on, you know, praising and praying. And thanking and worshiping and letting the presence come. The presence of the Lord. 
It says, let our prayers be made known in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It, it, it seems like uh, for me, even, even now when, when my children come up to me and they, they say, I'm not feeling well or this, you know, I'll just, before I do anything, I'll just start praising God. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you've even given me a mind to come to you. I thank you that you are the great physician. You can fix anything. Jeremiah 32, 27, Lord, you're the God of all flesh. Nothing too hard for you. Jeremiah said, I know you made us. Certainly you can fix us. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, you have a wonderful Lord's Day. Amen. Support your local church. Amen. These are uh, times of difficulty for many. But I'm, I'm going to prophesy on you right now. The Lord is on you. And his glory is to be seen on you. Amen. So if this is a time where you are not uh, strapped and things have been <laughs> flowing for you, amen, amen, take care of someone else. Be a blessing to someone else, amen. Bless your local church, amen. Just like Mary uh, told uh, the servants, the first miracle Jesus ever did, and, and Jesus was uh, letting her know this is this is premature, you know. She says, um, "You need to do something about this situation." And Jesus looks. He looks at his mother and says, oh, "What have I got to do with this? My hour has not yet come. You know, my mission is not to turn water into wine." She turns around and says, "I know how he operates." She tells the servants, "Whatever he tells you to do, you just do it." And read John chapter 2. The water turned to wine. And, and the, the, the one who had the big old shingding uh, had the reception. He says, well, then, you know, he says, usually in our custom, we put the good wine out first. You know, and then when folk is toe up from the flow up, then we put the bad wine out there. He said, but y'all done saved the best for life. He didn't have a clue what really had happened. But I said that to say... Mary told the servants, see the servants see the miracle. That's just why it's very important for us to come down. You know, the word of God says, Jesus, he didn't come to be ministered unto. He came to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. The, the servant sees the miracle. But Mary says, hey, whatever he tells you to do. Go ahead and do it and watch it multiply. So praise the Lord today. You have a wonderful day in Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, watch the peaceable fruits of righteousness come your way. This time, Brother Mark is going to come back and uh, tell us how we can give and uh, you enjoy your day. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, saints. We'd like uh, at this time to thank you for your giving thus far and uh, to let you know how you can actually give uh, love gifts, tithes, and offerings. You can do so by going to our website, which is spiritlifeministriesinternational.org. Under the giving page, there are two options for giving. One is PayPal. One is Givelify. Uh, choosing either, uh, it'll be self-explanatory how to go through. And there, either one is, is definitely secure, so I can assure you of giving online if you haven't done it so far. Uh, it's something you can actually do with, uh, without any fear of any problems. Uh, if that is not an option, you can also send your gift, a check to our physical location, which is 3401 Governor Prince Boulevard, Wilmington, Delaware, 19802. We'd also like to hear from any and each of you that... Uh, may be in need of salvation, might have recently been saved, or in need of a church home. Again, going to our website under the Contact Us page, uh, there are two forms. You can feed out, fill out either one or both, leaving your first and last name and email address. Uh, someone from the ministry will get back to you. Those forms are relating to becoming a member or actually uh, uh, if you've recently 
accepted the Lord in the way of being saved or are in need of salvation. Uh, as Pastor mentioned earlier, the uh, notes from uh, this week today will actually be on our website within the hour. So you can actually view those under the uh, updates page. And as well as today's notes uh, over the last several weeks, uh, those notes have actually been there as well. So if you needed to go back to sort of review what's been shared and to uh, be blessed. Uh, so our hope that you would have a blessed Sunday and God bless.